Welcome everyone. Batman here. Just wanted to bring you to one of our favorite spots in the world. Bodhimanda Zen Center. A beautiful spring here. Checking out. Juicy meditating in the pool. It's very quiet and beautiful. Located in Jemez Springs, New Mexico, um, it's a, a, a monastery started by Joshu Roshi, a Zen master. My personal oh. refuge. Good morning, everybody. Uh, just wanted to come at you with another episode here. Our prickly pear, um, Bodhi, uh, strawberry quinoa breakfast mashup just wanted to also speak a little bit today about the concept of being a global gardener which uh, is a I think basically the task of humankind um, here we're actually meant to augment the land and make things more beautiful and more abundant if you look at um, coastal tribal peoples um, the way they utilize the landscape or people, Pueblo people, or Four corner, Corners people, like uh, lived here in New Mexico, they actually helped to augment the land in a lot of ways. They would, you know, pick seeds at the uh, prime time, prime season, and disperse them. And that's what we're going to do with our prickly pear seeds. We're going to just go spread them around on our land, hope that we can have some more prickly pears because they are delicious. It takes a little bit of time. But uh, we'll show you the method as far as how to uh, gather them, how to process them, and then um, as to how to eat them, it is uh, up to you. There are many different ways. We just had this week, we gathered a quart of silver buffalo berries from the Hungry Leader Garden, and then we combined that with about a quart of uh, prickly pear and some banana and some local lettuce, and we made ourselves a like almost completely wild smoothie uh, and that was delicious so you know there's just experiment you can also do I wanted to talk about the idea of the mono meal which is just eat just like have a cantaloupe for a meal or get some cobs of corn and just eat corn for a meal just raw you know it's delicious you'd be surprised uh, you could get a bunch of prickly pears and peel them. Have prickly pears for a meal. Um, but that's just a concept of eating a simple meal so that you digest. Oftentimes, uh, with raw food, you're amalgamating so many different kinds of foods to try and get a complete diet that, you know, uh, simplicity kind of eludes us. We get too complex. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of, you know, this idea of raw food. And, wild fooding is, you know, our ancestors would just go in the environment and walk around and find some food to eat. And uh, the simplicity and brevity of that is, uh, is beautiful and interacting with the landscape uh, in a positive way so that if you're picking shoots, that concept of becoming a global gardener, you pick shoots off plants, it'll grow, it'll spread and become two. Um, and you pick that again, those become four. If you eat um, plants in season, you spread their seeds uh, in your feces or otherwise, um, just by getting rid of the waste and dispersing it. Um, also, you know, uh, uh, gathering firewood so that there's not that dead wood that can ignite uh, forest fires and the airflow can get through the forest. Um, taking off, if you're a hunter, you're taking off the weaker animals. And by interacting that way with the land, we actually help the land. And I think that's kind of the ethos we need to uh, uh, shift towards. And I think a shift is happening naturally. I think people are, are becoming more aware of diet, more aware of their connection through diet, 
to the planet and um, trying to make a healthy, happy way forward with abundance for everyone, I think is a realistic goal. And that there need be no one who goes without and no one who hoards too much. Um, I think either way is a form of um, poverty of the spirit. It, um, you have to know that the whole universe is here to support you and that your being, is, you're composed of millions of cells, there's millions of organisms, almost individual organisms, working in concert for your life. There's more bacteria, beneficial bacteria, alive inside of you than uh, you uh, think. There's, it's a, it's a huge proportion. It's, and without those bacteria, you can't survive. Um, so everything is a community of life feeding itself, feeding each other. Um, and I feel that that is very beautiful. It's, you know, connection, it's relationships um, all the way down. And your lifeblood, your energy, it's the energy of the universe just moving um, from form to form, that electromagnetism, which is, I think, our spirit, perhaps. It's, you know, it's a subtle energy inside of us, it's the intelligence and the animating uh, conscious aspect of creation. Um, so anyways, I'll stop blathering now. I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about these thoughts that are uh, always on my mind and how to ever get closer to um, uh, ethos, a, a way of living, um, and uh, understanding um, of unity. Uh, inside and out but anyway uh, in, in the concept and the ethos of becoming a global gardener I think is embedded a um, non fear based spirituality uh, spirituality that um, is a power based spirituality a spirituality that empowers you to um, be more loving be more gentle be more considerate be more kind um, and uh, also to give you more personal power, more integrity, more um, knowledge, more um, wisdom as well. Um, kind of all stemming from that concept of a human being's own sovereignty and their uh, abiding uh, Christ-like or Buddha-like nature. Um, and the last thought I'd, I'd want to add to that uh, um, concept of a non-fear-based spirituality um, what was it oh that uh, simply um, you're entitled to abundance um, you're entitled to love you're entitled to um, peace um, that's not to say it's going to be handed to you on a silver plava, platter, any of those things. All of them you have to strive for. All of them come with uh, personal pains and, and personal gains. You have to work. Know that you're always working towards something. You'll never finish it. You'll never, you know, arrive. Um, no matter how good your diet is or how much you meditate or, you know, you, you know, become more comfortable and entrained to it, I think, over time, and this concept, this idea that, you know, we're, we're basically love um, and light that's crystallized in the matter to go through the crucible uh, of life for greater understanding, knowledge, and wisdom. Uh, I guess that's all for now. We'll bring you some information here on the prickly pears and recipe and as usual much love